<laughs> Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So it's been a little bit, life kind of went a little crazy, but good news we're back and all of April, all live streams are already up on the channel. So you can go ahead and go to any new ones that you want to see, hit get notified, and you'll be notified right when I go live. And of course, you can always watch back later. So that's really exciting. The one other big piece of news is I moved from Wednesdays to Thursdays uh, for my bi-weekly videos lives so just a note on that the timing is the same it's just thursday instead of wednesday so today we are going to create some kind of piece of art to go on my walls now just a kind of background story is i have rather than hanging pictures up on my wall i have a little shelf in this the pictures sit on that shelf and I should have taken a picture but I didn't I, I'll try and take a picture um, once we finish this and I redo my whole decorations and I change out my decorations typically every two months so I'm just getting done with my Easter decorations so you can see that Easter is from about March 18th to April 10th. We're getting close to that. We're going to move into Enchanted Forest. So I had this big gap in between Easter and Independence Day, and I just didn't want either of those really up for that long. So you can see I have this whole list of what I'm doing when and the kind of the color palette that goes along with it. So for the first year, we are gonna do Enchanted Forest. And I don't have any Enchanted Forest specific decor. So that's what we're gonna try and tackle today. <laughs> I didn't do a very good job planning ahead, um, but I've started to get some things out and we can start working on it. So I really loved this Magic Forest from Stamperia. It came out a couple of months ago i think they do a new collection every month and this was a couple months ago and i loved it so much i really should have gotten more of this paper um i'll see i might have to see if i can get some more but i think it's just beautiful and this is just the background paper but oh my gosh look at the beautiful beautiful backgrounds oh i love that and i have them in page protectors because I'm a little paranoid. I don't get a ton of paper, but when I do, I like I like to keep it nice because I really like it. Oh, I just love the colors on here. I love everything about these papers. And they were actually the big inspiration for the Enchanted Forest time. Now I also have, so it'll go Enchanted Forest, Independence Day, Mediterranean summer and then castles. <laughs> I don't know if I've thought of a fun name for that, but kind of the September um, time frame, September, October time frame. Here where I live in Oklahoma, it's too hot for it to really be fall. So I'm going with kind of castles because I love castles and this will be something that'll be great hopefully for that time frame as well. Wow. Definitely want to make something with that background someday. The one thing about these papers I don't love is that they're front and back sided and they have such beautiful papers on both sides. I would much rather they just did one sided designs and then you could really have a lot more stuff. So here's this one, beautiful. I'll try and lift them up so you can see more. Oh, I love that. Wow, that is a beautiful one. I'm going to have to do something with that. I kind of have one in mind, which you won't be surprised when you see it, because it is this one, the one on the, on the screen here you can see. And I'll switch 
to the tabletop. I was kind of waiting until I got to this point, but I think this is the one I want to use. Now, the background is pretty cool. It has this tree bark like background, but I'm going to let's go for it. I want to use this side. It's just too beautiful not to. And I think it does a lot of the work. So if I add a little bit to this and call it good, it'll still look amazing. So let's grab that to the side. I did want to show you the rest of them. Love this. So beautiful. Oh, the back is beautiful too. I need like five of each of these pages so I don't feel bad using it. <laughs> I love this one too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm going to have to go back through and buy some more of these. Okay. So we know what is on my plate after this <laughs> after this uh, YouTube live, but let's go for this. So I'm definitely wanting to do that. I did grab out a couple of stencils. And just a reminder, on Thursday, you can see we're organizing with stencils with the thermal cinch. So we're gonna take all of these that I've made that hold all my stencils and bind them into a book. I'm excited and nervous at the same time. So we'll see how it goes. Definitely join live for that one. <laughs> okay, so back to this one. I love how this stencil really gives the impression of dragon scales. So I'm kind of thinking maybe doing some dragon scales here in the corner. And then if I could get some kind of dragon image and color that, that might be cute. Okay, so that's an idea. I did also grab, and I don't know that it's needed, but maybe kind of a sun. I don't know. That's a thought. Let's let's keep thinking on that one. But if we did that, we'd probably want to do it sooner rather than later. So I'll leave it out for a second. Let's go over and look at my catalog. Okay. Let me just double check everything's working. And I apologize to everyone for being a little bit less prepared today. I just... I just, yeah, it's been a hard couple weeks. So here we're in the home section of my catalog. And I want to pull out, oh, some things that might work. Okay. So I do like this tassels, B202. So let's pull that out. Bam. Might might put some beautiful tassels. Okay, keep moving. Hmm. I do like this heart locket. 0202. 02. 01, 02, 02. More stencils. <laughs> oh, well, what can you do? Okay. I'm going to drop these down here. Put that over there. Let's keep moving. That is cute, but not quite on theme. Oh, but some of these would be really beautiful. R39. Let's grab it just in case. R389. Okay. Here we go. And hmm, I love these too, but I don't know. I don't think I'm feeling it. So let's keep moving. Let's keep grooving. Find some more fun things. Okay, now we're in storybook, which is maybe one of my favorite. I'm going to slightly move you over. One of my favorite sections. I just love... I love fairy tales. I love all that kind of stuff. So these are going to be too small. Let's keep going. We could put a castle in the background, but I think there might be easier castles to do. So, oh, I love that one. 
Hmm. Maybe let's get Y218. Let's get it out just in case. Y2. Okay, give me a second. 1, 8. All right. Okay, so it goes with all those small things, but we could build a larger castle. That might be fun. Okay. That castle is beautiful. I did something really cool with that castle a while ago. Okay, then let's keep moving. And I have some of these pre-made pre kind of things. Let's see if there's anything good that would work in. Oh, these are beautiful stickers that I just love. They're a little too bright for this project, so let's keep going. No, no, you know I'm not feeling that, but here, these might be cute. Let's grab one of each of these, and I can always put them back if we don't use it. Keep moving. Love all of that, but it's just not quite the right project. We could do something color in this and then cut out along the top edge. That's definitely an idea. Kind of a home home kind of deal. Okay. Then we've got all of our rice paper. Here's some eyes. Those are nice. Not, not really feeling any of this goes super well. It's kind of what we're going for here. Some beautiful stuff, just not, not on brand right now. Okay, keep moving forward. I do think this is all like Stamperia though, so not surprising that does go pretty well. Those feathers are nice. We could do a few feathers. Let's let's think about that. And keep moving. Yeah, skip ahead a bit. No, no. I'm gonna skip all of my <laughs> in process or completed projects that I haven't put together, added on extras, extra bits and pieces. So let's squeeze you over here. And again, close. I think at the very end here, we have a few more things. So let's keep moving. Here we go. Let me squeeze you one more time right here. Okay, I do love this castle. And this castle actually goes along with the paper set we're using. So I'm gonna grab that out. Maybe we'll use it instead of the castle I already grabbed. And we've got a lot of different cool things. Hmm. We could use this lady. She seems fun. Maybe this uh, deer thing. I don't know. I'm feeling something. Okay, we'll leave this section open over here and let's go and start working on our page. There we go. Okay, so if we're thinking maybe dragging coming in from this side, and then we've got this castle, so we could go have a castle kind of over here. Hmm. Maybe these two kind of there. We could always do something like behind her. 
Might be too much behind both of them. And then we could do is kind of from the bottom here is paint or color this down here and then trim off on the edge. Maybe pull it and it, it kind of be an excursion. Okay. I think I think that's what we're going going to start with at least. So I think the very first thing we're going to do is pull all of this off and let's stencil some of this. So I have a few different colors we can go with. Let me grab them right quick. Here we go. Kind of feeling gold. Could always add just a hint of red if we're feeling so inclined. But I don't know. Now they brought the red. The red is just out of color theme, I think. And I'm feeling like maybe this one, maybe these two might be the best because we've got a lot of this champagne-y color and we've got a little bit of the gold. So let's mix the two and go with that. Okay. So this one is candlelight gold and this one is silver bells, which looks a little bit more champagne-y to me than silver, but whatever, whatever, we're going to go with it because it matches the colors we're going with. Okay. So candlelight gold, silver bells. Let's grab it. Remember that this is... Oh, press and seal, and I use that to keep it nice and wet and so it doesn't dry out. So let's give it a little tiny bit of a mix. I don't know how well not letting it drying out worked, but <laughs> it's a little stiff. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and maybe we'll put this one down first. Just a little bit of it. I'm just worried. Just worried about this paste. It seems like I've, I haven't used that much of it, but it sure seems like I have. Okay. Let's just add it in a few places. Kind of make the edges... A little bit more organic and for right now we'll call that good I'm gonna put the top over let's grab some of this and we're only gonna grab enough less than we think we're gonna need because we can always add more but since we're mixing colors, we don't really want to put any back. So we're just going in like that. Okay. There we go. Alright, let's call that good. And we'll put these on. The lids on so they don't dry out because we don't want that. Nice and tight. Then I'm going to peel off this and put it in some water. Let's hope it looks kind of organic. I think it does actually. We may need to, once it's dry, add a little bit of dark green kind of over it. Pounce some of that in so that the sparkle really picks up. But I'm liking how that's looking. 
Okay, there we go. And real quick, let me put, let me clean off my tool and put that away and put my glitter away. And we'll keep working. Keep making beautiful stuff. Okay. There we go. I guess that'll work. Okay. <laughs> so we've got one corner started. Let's keep working. Okay, I'm I'm really liking the idea of kind of having this in the corner. So I'm gonna pull this over to the side, let it start drying and see if I can grab this guy. Okay, and let me pull the camera up so you can see what I'm doing next. Catalog, here we go. Let's look at some of these colors because I'm feeling these inks. You definitely want to follow kind of the color scheme We've already got. I think this one definitely works. Let's get kind of a brown. Some nice browns. Oops. How about this jackalope? So Nessie jackalope. Hmm. Not feeling that one. Maybe a darker brown. Do we have a darker brown? I'm worried that we don't. Will of the Wisp. They just don't look very dark to me, at least colored out. Hmm. This may be maybe harder than I thought. Okay, we'll get the Will of the Wisp and we'll hope it's dark enough. And maybe, maybe one blue. Hmm. We could do a fun blue, like this Bermuda Triangle. I think it has fun properties. Very blues. Okay. Let's go with the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> Let's try it. Let's see what we've got. Here we go. And we're back. And I'm going to grab a brush. Fill up my little handy dandy water. Bout water cup. Okay, drop that in. And what we've got to do is shake these up real quick. Because you can kind of see the pigment sometimes will get stuck on the bottom. Here's an example of where it's not stuck. This one's harder to tell. Let's see. Ah, uh, there we go. This one's all shook up. This one's all shook up. So I guess let's keep moving forward. I'm just going to drop just like two drops in each. And I do clean out my pipette between each because we don't want to cross contaminate but I will keep these out and you might be able to tell I have I did try and pick out colors that kind of went with similar to what we were already going to be using okay There we go. Two colors down. Jackalope, Nessie, next Will of the Wisp. Which, interesting. 
guess I, I don't know what color I would do Will of the Wisp, but I don't know about brown. <laughs> I think brown would not be the color I would do. Let's, maybe blue or green might be more of a Will of the Wisp type of color to me personally, but whatever. And then we got the Bermuda Triangle last. And this one should have some interesting properties. All of them should. The Jane Davenport inks all have interesting properties, but I think this one should be extra, extra fun. So we'll keep an eye for that. And there we go. Okay. I'm going to close this up. Sorry. I just don't like, I will spill this everywhere. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. And let's start painting in some color. Huh. Okay. Let's get, we don't need a ton of colors for these. And the reason why is they've added so much shading with the pen work that kind of just keeping it simple with the colors is going to be enough. <laughs> Plus these Jane Davenport inks are going to have a lot of really cool like techniques, things that'll happen as we paint them. Um, so I just, I don't want to go too wild and crazy. Just get the color down. We can always add more. Uh, it's going to be too much. Let's pull it back, add a little water. And there you can see, even just a tiny bit of this ink adds a lot. So let's keep going, keep adding. And I might go for some lighter colors kind of in the background. Let's get rid of this dark, blend out that line that's happening there. Start pulling in some of the darker colors up front, and then we'll have it nice and lighter in the background. That'll help give some dimension. And I think we might go ahead and actually add some of the yellow into this far back. Maybe this jackalope, just a hair, a tiny bit of water. That's going to be way too much, but let's get it on and then let's dab it off <laughs> really quickly. Okay, there we go. Let's clean up that brush a little bit and let's go Just a little bit darker. Okay. We can keep adding in some darker greens on the trees here in a second. What once uh, this first layer of ink is dry. Okay. And I'm liking that. Okay. Okay. That's looking really good. Now, I'm thinking yellow for the mountain here, or for this house. So let's go with that. Just drop that color in. I think that looks pretty good. There we go, we might. Just go ahead, add that color in here as well. And I'm thinking along this road. Just add that in. Maybe a tiny bit of the brown too. Just kind of give it some variegation more in the front and less in the back. I think that looks really fun. We add just a little bit of this 
darker color on over here as well. Okay. So I'm just gonna go in, oh gosh, I don't know. I don't know, that might have been a mistake. <laughs> the ink kind of travels, so that's something to note. Okay, and I'm feeling a blue roof. I don't know why, I'm feeling it. Let's go blue. I'm working on a design I want to have embroidered on one of my outfits I'm designing, and I want blue roofs, so <laughs> I think that's where I'm coming from. Okay, let's have the dark blue here, and then I'm thinking if we could get real light blue kind of on these mountains. That might be fun. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I'm thinking that'll be fun. It might be way too much. Who knows? Not this girl. Okay. Pull that over. And we're just going real simple today. Nothing too wild or too crazy. I say that and then this is turning out to be a little wild and crazy, but what can you do? That blue really goes a long way. Okay. Let's see, maybe we can pull some of it up. I don't know. I don't know. I kind of feel like we ruined it with that. It was looking so good. Well, there is an answer for that. We can use some gouache type paint to paint over. So let's let this dry for just a minute. Let's come in with some of this darker green and paint in some of the trees. To help with the definition, we'll add a few darker areas. I think that'll really help here without having to do a ton of work. The nice thing is it kind of shows you where we need to put those dark areas. Just following the lines. Now, the rem reminder for you is we want to paint darkest in the front and then lightest in the back. I don't know that we've done the best on that, but we're trying. We are trying. <laughs> Here we go. That's a nice happy green trees. Dark. Give us more definition between the layers. Okay. There we go. And anywhere else, just add, I don't know. I don't know if we're making it worse or making it better, but we're making it something. <laughs> we're making it different, that's for sure. Okay. I don't know. I may, may have just butchered that whole thing, but let's let it dry for just a second. And since we've got this ink out, I do like to use it while it's still fun. And let's just paint on some cardstock. Oh, that is fun. I am a fan of that color. Okay, clean up our brush, 
maybe we'll grab some of this green paint that green in blend it together add some more green there we go and I think that's an easy background to add onto stuff so if you were looking for an easy background that is definitely one for beautiful cards so you might have to make something with that soon let's get one more paper out and we can add some more of the other colors oh i do love this color too this jackalope what a beautiful yellow yellow brown okay add some of this dark more sedona -y color I think this one's the will of the wisp and blend that together Ooh. let's go ahead and just bring it out Of that color there we go okay another beautiful background done I think we have enough of the green and the blue to do one more just easy background grab some of that color we can use another day okay let's grab some of that and then we'll just drop this color in just willy-nilly as we feel like it wherever it needs to go put some more layered in get that beautiful inky effect oh I'm loving that And let's grab some of this green, add it in. Oh, ooh, how fun. Okay, ah, grab it. Grab the last of it, just add it in over this beautiful card stock okay there we go easy peasy lemon squeezy and we'll set those aside to dry and we can use those in this project the future project many many opportunities for these okay clean that up our brush real fast pull this out of the way and we might need some clean water so give me two seconds to get us a little bit of clean water and there we go I I guess I I think this is looking okay. Let me pull this in and see what we're thinking. Hmm. It is close. Maybe if we put just a tiny bit of white over the top. So I've got this layer cake, which is basically just wash. That's really what it is. I'm going to clean my brush off. Same brush we were using. And I'm going to grab a little bit of this blueberry tart pan. And I'm kind of running in between these white and this blue. And I'm feeling like if we just kind of go over 
the top, add some nice dimension here with this color. That'll lighten it up quite a bit and allow us to use this as intended. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes you do things and you're like, maybe this is making it better. Maybe it's making it worse. Who can tell? Okay. Let's keep going a little bit further. Get this over here kind of blended in just a tiny bit more. Okay, actually that's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Let's clean our brush again. And I don't know if you can see this very well, but here's kind of what we're working with. I feel like a tiny bit of blue on the roof. Might kind of blend that in then together with the background a little bit. Okay, so I'm feeling better about that. I do think we need to let it dry. And then what we'll be able to do is cut along this edge and I might tear the two sides. So I'll probably tear the two sides first and then fussy cut along the edge so that that will go, oh, come on, put this over here. That'll go right here. And I think it'll be nice. It'll kind of blend in here. It'll kind of be like, we're telling a story, you know, um, an adventure story where you start at home, go to the castle, meet the pretty princess, um, come down and fight the dragon, that kind of thing. Um, so I, I like this. I'm liking where this is going. So maybe if we cut out a few of these... Ah, feathers. You could always have a few feathers hanging down from the top. That might be fun. And then, or we could have some tassels hanging down from the top and maybe have those kind of in gold. I don't know. I like both options. I think I'm gonna skip the feathers. I do really wanna do something with those feathers though, cause they're beautiful, which is why I kept them. Um, so let's, let's maybe glue down this castle cause I'm definitely feeling like that would be good. Although we could put a little bit of dark green kind of around the edges blend some dark green let's grab a blending brush and maybe some of this rustic wilderness just to get a little bit of definition and we're getting close to this being dry but we're not quite there yet so work up here. I don't want to do anything too wild and crazy. I just want to darken this area a little bit so that the castle pops and not mess everything up, <laughs> else up at the same time. Okay, there we go. You can barely even tell that I did that. But I'm hoping it does help a little bit. 
I think it does actually. Maybe just a tiny bit more. Kind of blend out that area a little bit. And just a bit more green. Okay. Easy way to add some dimension without adding too much. And I'm just cleaning off my brush now on a microfiber cloth because I feel like that really grabs the ink that's left over and pulls it off. And then I tend to wash these alone or with other things. I don't mind getting kind of off colored. So let's put this bad boy down. Okay, so I'm definitely feeling good about that. Here we go. Then I think in her, I feel like she needs something. Um, maybe she has a pet. She rides a pet deer. <laughs> and here we go. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm a little out of frame. Here we go. So I have this, I think it's, I don't think it's a sticker. It's just like a clear acetate where white has been printed on it. I have two different ones. Are we feeling like the one with the crown that's a circle or this one? Ooh, I'm kind of feeling this one. I'll have to glue that down. Glue her there. We may need to darken a little bit behind her the same way we did over here because you can see where that darker green is, that white pops a bit more. We also got this big guy. I don't know. I don't I'm going back and forth about him. Let's see, let me just heat dry this real quick and we'll work on it. <laughs> we can work on it and then move back to the things that I'm not sure about. Here we go. got that nice and good and I think if we peel away from us we should get the white edge left behind yep so we, I want that because I think I may tint that slightly yellow okay then Pull it this way, and there we go. Don't really care about the top too much because we're going to fussy cut around that. And I think just yellowing over the whole top of it will be helpful. <laughs> I think that may be what this little piece needs to actually kind of blend in better to the background. Because there's definitely kind of a yellow cast to the whole paper that this might just be lacking. Okay, there we go. So this is how it's looking. Oh, that is cute. Kind of get here. And yeah, I'm thinking a little bit of a yellow cast and then maybe just a little bit of brown darkening the edge there. Okay, give me a second, put the yellow back. And I think I'm gonna get some old paper for that. Hmm, 
and maybe Frayed Burlap? Hmm, no, I'm feeling that might be a little too much. Let's get the tea dye and we can always adjust. Okay, I'm gonna start with tea dye and I'm going to blend in, especially over here, just add some of this tea dye. My goal is to add a little bit of darkness so that the paper pops. There we go. But I don't want to green out this whole lake either. So we're gonna keep it over here. And I think that'll still pop pretty well. Okay. Even just that tiny bit really helped. Now let's put this to the side for a second. Oh gosh. And let's blend in the tea dye on the side. Okay. I think it's picking up some of the yellow or the green that was already there, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Let's just blend over this whole thing just a tiny bit to kind of tone it all together. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Darken up those edges. As if somebody had a painting of their home that they took with them on their long, exciting journey into the enchanted forest. <laughs> How fun. Okay. Really try and clean this off. And, okay, we are almost at an hour. And of course, per usual, I have not finished. Okay, here we go. Ooh. I do really like how this is turning out. So I'm definitely in love and good with what, what we've done so far, which is this area over here. I need to get a kind of a dragon, a dragon drawing over here. And then I really like how this has turned out. I like that a lot. I'm kind of thinking maybe in the background having little dashed lines to show kind of where things have, you know, the journey this person has gone on. Hmm. Okay. But I don't want to rush this. I'm really enjoying what we're creating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here. And we will come back to this. I'll set up some time um, maybe tomorrow or Tuesday. And we can come back and keep working on this. I'll think about it over the next day or two. Figure out what next steps I want to take. And we'll come back and hopefully finish this up because I'm really loving where it's going, but I don't want to rush it to just get it done because I definitely want to put this up in my house and I can show you, I'll try and remember to take pictures and I can show you kind of um, what we're working towards. Oh, I'm going back and forth about this girl and him. Really, these three sections we've done so far, I'm really happy with. The rest of it, I'm not 100% sure on. So if you have any ideas or like any of the things I've suggested about doing further, definitely let me know in the notes below. Um, and we'll keep working on this. We'll get it done and I'll probably frame it and put it up in my house. So I hope you guys have a very crafty day. We're having a great time. Uh, we'll have another, I'll create another 
live stream just like this one. Same, same front and everything. And we'll keep working on this sometime this week. And then next on Thursday, we'll have our live creating some stencil books with the thermal cinch. So a lot coming up, a lot happening. There's also a ton of other lives coming this month. So don't forget to subscribe, like this video, go to uh, my channel, check out the lives that are upcoming. You can go to those pages and hit notify me so you get notified on any lives you want to join. And I will see you back in just a few.